Well, well, welcome to Lab Life with the Air Force Research Laboratory. Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Kenneth. Hello, folks. Today we are joined by Colonel Nathan Diller to discuss all things AFWorks, SpaceWorks, and how both of their missions are crucial in forming the Air Force and Space Force of tomorrow. In three, two, one. Colonel Diller, good morning and welcome to the podcast. Good morning. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, we're excited to have you here today. Uh, We're really going to dive into everything that you do as the director of AFWorks. But first, we want to go back in time a little bit to maybe, you know, one of the reasons that you're talking to us today. Uh, You grew up on a family farm, but you actually helped build an airplane in your youth? Sure. Boy, yeah, we definitely are going back in history. Grew up in Texas where my family grew corn and wheat. Uh, soybeans and growing up uh, there was an instance where I had some pretty bad experience with pesticides and so I explored a little bit the opportunities for organic farming and realized that actually there was a pretty notable market there from a pers- from perspective of being able to make a little bit more value out of the crops as well as avoid some of the associated risks. We started organic farming as part of that. Obviously, one of the challenges is the risk of insects creating damage to those crops. And so there was an approach, a company in California that had these beneficial insects you could distribute across your crops and they would reduce that risk of other insects eating your crops. And in order to distribute those, what better way than air power? And so we started dropping those beneficial insects out over crops. It seemed to work very well, uh, letting us continue to grow crops without pesticides, with the ability to sell them then organically, the associated premium there on those types of crops, and all of the benefit uh, of the fact that I get to go engage in one of my passions, which is flying. We had a light, very light aircraft at the beginning that didn't work so well in the Texas winds. and. There was a design actually brought to the United States by airmen, of course, who were stationed in Clovis, New Mexico, and they brought over a company to sell an experimental aircraft kit uh, that we built. Uh, It was a two-place experimental aircraft. Uh, So built that while I was in junior high and high school and began flying there. And it has been a passion that continues today of trying to get opportunities for folks to enjoy what we in the Air Force love, which is air power uh, in so many forms and fashions. Certainly building an experimental aircraft on the family farm is in line with a strong interest in STEM, which for you eventually grew into a career in the Air Force with you know cool things like attending flight school in France. Can you tell us about your journey? Well, I certainly loved flying, but I also love the building part. Uh, the aircraft we built actually had of this mix of different composites and wood and fabric. And so studied physics as an undergraduate, had the chance to go study engineering and policy as a graduate student. And this intermixing of technologies, of policy, uh, in order to develop certainly flying things, but across the spectrum on technologies. Uh, I had wanted to go to test pilot school, which is where you get to uh, really see this intermixing of engineering and flying, the operational combined with the the technology. And that largely drove my desire to go to test pilot school and then what eventually led me into some of the program management pieces as well as when you take those technologies and you find those use cases for those technologies, eventually bringing them to fruition through uh, the very challenging job of program management in the Department of the Air Force. So it's been a great mix of those different interests that the Air Force has given me the opportunity to engage in for the last few years. So speaking of some of these opportunities, uh, we did hear that you were able to work on the GPS program. Can you kind of go into what it was like working on a system that so radically changed how the world operates? Absolutely. And it, you know, to some degree ties back to those opportunities to see the broad and early use really of defense technologies with such very broad impacts across really all all facets of life. Uh, We actually had a a small little handheld GPS back in the 1990s. It was fascinating to see 
the development of that technology, what that did uh, when we were doing some of the flying there on the farm. And then eventually with precision agriculture, the ability to use global positioning system for tractors, right? With precision farming, allowing even, you know, besides the insect challenges, obviously the weeds uh, being able to reduce the risk there through precision farming that avoids the need for herbicides as well. So working global positioning system, you know, the radical transformation that happened in warfare as we went from a world where we slowly started to not look for the most destructive means possible, but actually in our Department of Defense, starting to use precision in a way that reduces actually that destructive capacity in warfare. And GPS is 100% essential to that. The impacts of GPS across global commerce, the network that that provides, and the fact that that is done by our Air Force, uh, providing really a global service to the world is, is was phenomenal. It was phenomenal to see the complexity, right, and the professionalism of those program managers and those technologists from the ground equipment that takes the signal and pushes out precision timing to the world, to obviously the space segment, and then to the user segment. How do you actually build a multitude of different uses, right? And, and again, this idea of dual use technology fueled by our Department of the Air Force, creating just phenomenal, phenomenal world-changing impact. It was exciting to be a part of in the short time that I spent there. LA Air Force Base, uh, an Air Force base without a runway, which was a, a separate surprise. Kind of following on that same line then, uh, when you were there in uh, you know, sunny LA and working on a lot of these, or working here at the project and connecting with this precision timing, was this something that when the team was working on, they of course knew the impact this would have, but did they really foresee kind of the, the usability? Like, did you think that civilians would have this as a handheld device in the future? Or do you think it was really going to be military, agriculture, or business oriented uh, when you're working? Like kind of, at least when you go back, where was your headspace? Just like very specific, or did you see this really blowing up like it did? You know, I think there was an evolution, uh, a period, you know, starting back in the late seventies, when kind of the founders of GPS began launching the idea Obviously, then in the 1980s, there was the opening of the use of GPS to make sure that there was greater safety for air travel under President Reagan, starting to open some of that up and then further into the Clinton administration into the 1990s. So I, to me, it's, it's really just a great lesson of the opportunity to really take a, a small technology and when you put it in the hands of, of innovative folks, you start to grow a market in ways that potentially folks never understood possible, right? You, you see all these spinoffs and this is, I think this is the really exciting part about some of the things we do in AppWorks is the sooner you create that connectivity between the technologist and the user, you suddenly have just this explosion in some cases of a, of a market explosion of really public good that can come from these technologies. And, and so I think no, so many of these things were never foreseen, right? The, the impact that the global positioning system has on banking, for example, if, if the, the fact that you can get that degree of precision timing and the opportunity that that creates for financial transactions, I don't, I don't think that was one that was ever really foreseen that you can leverage the ubiquity of that precision timing source really to create a, a gold standard for timing that enables so many things, telecommunications. So, so, I mean, I think it's just a, it's a great lesson of a little bit of air force investment in the right direction with, in some cases, right. And this goes a little bit against the great program management discipline that I learned as a, as a young program manager in global positioning system, that you certainly have cost schedule performance risk, but how do you set aside some, some of those hedges? How do you introduce those possibilities? so that you can be opportunistic and on occasion find phenomenal benefits in ways that you really never foresaw. So speaking of finding these benefits and uh, something you mentioned before, you said AFWorks. So I think a lot of our listeners have heard this before, um, at least have an idea of what AFWorks is, but just in case they haven't, uh, can you kind of explain to them why or what it is, I should say, and why AFWorks is so important to the Air Force? Absolutely. So I think it's important to look a little bit at the history of AFWorks we've seen a bit of an evolution. And, and again, I going to this, this fact that you, you kind of see an idea and, and you let that idea grow. You let, you let different folks touch it and, and watch 
the different ways where you you start to see all these 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 side benefits. When Africa started, it was very much focused on airman empowerment, and that's not changed at all. In fact, I would say we're we're kind of doubling down on that. But but that was almost the the primary initial focus. The idea of touch points with industry was certainly there, but not to the scale that we're seeing today. And so, what are those ways that our Department of the Air Force could really unlock those passions in our airmen and now our guardians so that when they get up in the morning and they see, wow, this is a challenge, right? I've, I've got a difficulty at in my primary career field that I know there's a better way. Once upon a time, we might have just complained about that and said that's a bureaucracy or or the system won't let me do it. And and what AFWORK said is that's not that's not true at all. We we want to know you are the person that has the expertise on solving that problem. It, it, going and handing that problem over to someone else is only going to create inefficiencies. We want to empower you. We want to give you the tool set, you as the expert in that problem, to go help us solve that problem. And so that was really the launch point of AFWORKS. It made it, and, and there were phenomenal benefits. You saw just a breadth of collaboration across, certainly across the networks that grew eventually into kind of this AFWORKS 2.0 model that went from a little broader focus, realizing the horsepower of our airmen and guardians, being able to bring forward those new ideas, being the expert in that operational challenge that's out there and saying, what, what tools are available? And so one of the tools that we found and experimented with all in this kind of same period was the app venture. So, so you, you saw kind of the AFWORKS 1.0 evolve into what we call today Spark. Uh, one of those tool sets became, what are the technologies to help me solve these problems? And that's what App Ventures brings is those touch points to the technologist. We've looked very much at the technologist in the small business community because we have had a tool called the Small Business Innovation Research Opportunity, where we can quickly have consistent approach to funding that outreach to the technologist and connects them with the, with the operator, with the user. And then eventually the last part of that is the prime program, which helps that great technology combined with that great talent to transition into a warfighting capability, making sure that we go beyond just a good idea stage, but actually to a fielded capability stage. So that's been the model that we've taken over the last year with this transition into the Air Force Research Laboratory and into Air Force Material Command uh, with this new approach to AppWorks. You've went over the main three efforts of, of AFWORK, so Venture, Spark, and Prime, to kind of recap. Now, how do our partners, potential partners in academia, industry, government agencies, how do they they connect with AFWORKS? How do you collaborate with them um, to accomplish the mission? One of the things that was realized in kind of this culture development piece uh, was really, I think, a, a sense of humility on our part as the Department of the Air Force that you know, we have great ideas, we have great folks, but we really, we have to go beyond kind of this hierarchical process where we we have the answer, we establish the requirement and look a little bit more broadly. And that's where we've done both internally with our entrepreneurs, right? Our airmen saying, let's let's go to the person that has the best information to help solve this problem. And, and that's the, the innovation that's happened internally from the companies that are out there a recognition that a lot of times those companies have great insights into ways of supporting our Department of the Air Force. And, and if only given an opportunity, they, they may have poor, a notable amount of their energy. I and mean, you just have phenomenal patriots that are out there working in technologies. And, right, and they also have a huge opportunity to benefit from those use cases. And so opening up that market. So ways that We've done that is one through the small business innovation research, the open topic where we say to industry, here's some focus areas, here's some things we're thinking about, but please bring us your ideas. How do we reduce that barrier to entry? Now, we've done that also through some of the AFWORKS challenge approach where we say, hey, here's a problem that we have. We're going to go sit down and give you some insights from our user community. We want to hear your insights on how you see those operational challenges potentially being solved with the capabilities that you have, the technologies you've been developing. Uh, and so those have, those have been two of the primary approaches to really opening the door to industry and making sure that we're deliberate. In some cases, this open door, just have a conversation 
and and to have this idea exchange. Uh, in other times, it is being deliberate and saying, no, there's there's really an opportunity to win a contract here. Being deliberate about those, or or maybe it's an opportunity to win an initial contract, right? A phase one contract, and and you get to see those operational use cases. But there may be times where a phase two contract isn't the next step for you. Maybe the next step is going in partnering with another company that together then you actually bring forward that technology for commercialization in our department of the air force in a different way and, and for our listeners that might not be familiar with some of the the phases of of partnering you mentioned a phase one contract a phase two contract those are really steps along the way to get funding to maybe develop an idea or develop a technology and and there's different thresholds um through this process and it, you definitely can check out, you know, afworks.af.mil or afresearchlab.com to, to learn a little bit more about that if they're intrigued in, in that process. But, you know, Spark, Ventures, Prime, do you have any favorite, you know, successes of the Afworks program that you'd love to share with our listeners? Frankly, it seems like there's a there's a news article pushed out almost daily of some flavor of partnership, whether it's at the airman level or whether it's at you know, one of the small business levels, or if it's things associated with our prime program on, on the airman side, you know, some phenomenal things that have happened through spark tank there were just this last week, right? We had this idea, this concept of being able to move very quickly in, in, in an agile fashion across the battle space. And that's through our agile combat employment. So our airmen have developed this approach to refueling that is saving $1.3 million a year. Uh, there was a, an article that just came out over the, the last week or so. Airman innovation on refueling that'll, that allows kind of that flexibility in operation. On the AppVenture side, you know, a multitude of companies that are, have gone through our Stratify program. Uh, some of these companies that are doing exciting things like 3D printing of large buildings. We had our Undersecretary of the Air Force go visit this company down in San Antonio a couple weeks ago. We have another company that is doing added to manufacturing, working internally with a lot of our technologists in AFRL uh, to see what's in the realm of the possible of getting airworthy parts through additive manufacturing. So exciting things that are happening there. And these are companies that in some cases are going from those phase one $50,000 contracts to a phase two kind of a million ish dollars to what we're calling our strategic funding increase, where they're being awarded, you know, 30, $50 million contract. So being able to go within one year from a $50,000 contract to a $50 million contract really allows for a scale and a pace of innovation acceleration that is, is hard to find in many other parts. And so it's been exciting to see these companies uh, with Agility Prime, the fantastic work that's been happening internal to AFRL and internal to AFMC with this certification of the first electric manned aircraft this year. That's really exciting. We have four other companies that have gone through this airworthiness process. So it's these are these are really groundbreaking opportunities that we're seeing in, in some notable firsts in aviation, some notable capabilities to again support our military operator, one company that's doing 3D printed buildings. Well, that's great for being able to quickly establish a point of operation for our department of the Air Force. Part of that company's purpose is, is to be able to reduce some of the housing crisis challenges uh, that are seen around the world. And so this dual use, you know, as I mentioned a little bit earlier with GPS, it just creates a phenomenal opportunity uh, really to create large public good while at the same time securing our nation. I'm just yeah. wondering now, I have to ask about the 3D printed houses. like everything or just like structure what's it look like so it's actually very interesting concrete mixes which also present opportunity because you can kind of dial the degree of of hardening that you need for these structures but it's it's yeah it's a, a 3d using concrete it has all the electric and plumbing kind of built in you know if you have some type of a problem with it uh still ways of working through that but i, I haven't seen any you know interior design 3D printing yet. If they come across that, if they, if they do that, uh, that'll certainly help me in those instances where I'm left to setting up the house, maybe when my wife isn't around. 
Well, I have to imagine, though, I mean, with these 3D printed houses, working on these electric aircraft, I mean, really groundbreaking technology with a lot, a lot of these cool companies. It's almost hard to hide your excitement each day coming in to think you're working with such brilliant minds. I mean, it's 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 really encouraging. You know, I, I certainly have lived here, been in different units and and been in different periods of the Air Force where we, you know, you, you could have folks that have just kind of got dismissive. And I, I'm just thrilled to see the energy of our airmen and our guardians saying, not, right, it, it's it's not a, it's not, you know, gripes and complaints. It's, wow, that's a hard problem. Here's 15 different ways that I'm going to go attack that and make our Department of the Air Force better. So in looking internally, extremely exciting to see the energy, to see the capability, right, the, the, the coders that are out there that are able to just, right, young kids right out of high school that are, that are putting on a stripe or two, and they're going and creating just phenomenal software to create efficiencies in the Air Force. So that's exciting. It's exciting to see as well the American entrepreneur, right, the maker of these technologies that, again, folks that come from just a huge diversity of backgrounds, you know, PhDs and in artificial intelligence, you know, the kind of just the artisan who never had any formal college education, but is the expert in in tooling or or it could be the expert in data management and so this opportunity to just see this diversity of education this diversity of de development and then when you start to mix those different groups together and you see the magic that comes out of it you can look around and be discouraged in different parts of the world but here in afworks having the opportunity to see that mix and then looking internally to our air force research laboratory and seeing the expertise of the engineers, that's really an unstoppable force and, and it's an exciting way, an, an honor to be able to just be a small part of all of that energy between that multidisciplinary team. And a, a new exciting part of AFWorks, which is also a part of the Air Force Research Laboratory, as you highlighted, is, is SpaceWorks, which it launched on August 19th of this year. Can you dive into the, the mission and, and goals of this new organization? The Space Force with all of the great new things they are bringing in many cases, uh, have added energy and new opportunity to AFWorks. And so really, uh, you know, we really don't even see a notable difference in structure. We are really 100% linked together in the structure from, right, this connectivity to industry through ventures, this connectivity to airmen and guardians through Spark, and these approaches to igniting emerging technology sectors through Prime. And so you're going to see here in the next month, the launch of our Space Prime, which is extremely exciting. Uh, and, and so from that perspective, we see so many technologies that overlap. We clearly see so many areas where concepts of operation require this joined Department of the Air Force team, this joint team of air and space, and so we, just like the rest of AFRL, one lab supporting two services, really much live that every day. The director of SpaceWorks is a deputy director to AFWorks. Uh, it's not out of the question that a future director of AFWorks could be a guardian. And so leveraging those opportunities, leveraging those technologies between air and space are really essential in order to create the fighting force we need. They're essential to developing this American innovation ecosystem. So it's been a it's been a phenomenal partnership so far. And we expect to see ongoing great things through the synergies that happen between the air and space domain. And we touched on many of the programs that AFWorks is using to really help grab in these innovative minds, these brilliant people, and the right businesses to help with different asks for the Air Force. Are there any campaigns or initiatives that you can speak on that SpaceWorks is trying to do much the same? Find those brilliant minds for solutions in, well, space and beyond. Absolutely. So we will be launching here just in a couple of weeks in November, our small business technology transfer program focused specifically on space logistics which has a breadth of exciting technologies uh right i mean it's from the most basic propulsion and ways of being able to maneuver in space to artificial intelligence and being able to track and maneuver around other objects in space from opportunities for doing things like on-orbit servicing in space 
uh, things like being able to do on orbit manufacturing in space, which creates a wealth of new capabilities that if manufactured on space, don't have to rely on that very, very difficult to launch environment. And you can go create new structures and shapes that never really have been imagined in space. So, so, and, and those are just a few of the really exciting opportunities that will be coming forward for the innovative companies that are out there paired with our research institutions and our universities. And this university piece is really important because what we have found with AFWorks, while we are focused on creating operational capability, there are some structural pieces that we really feel like are critical in enabling the force of the future. Certainly the structural pieces with our different stakeholder across industry, investors, the interagency and international community. Uh, but this piece on workforce is, is really essential. And so this small business technology transfer program, a special topic specifically for space that is running through this fall starts to help, we believe, academia and our research institutions see the importance of the development of the workforce in these particular technologies, these, these areas of technologies where we really cannot afford to be in second place. Wow. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, to hear that you have a lot already working there for Spaceworks is not only inspiring, but very, very cool. And it sounds like from a lot of this workforce development to logistics and space, I mean, hey, Spaceworks could be what builds that uh, you know ladder, if you will, as we climb up to build a new moon base. So it sounds like we can get to that point at some point. Absolutely. Uh, but that's that's amazing. Very inspiring. Uh, and with that, uh, we're kind of wondering, kind of taking a step back. Um, so being the director of AFWorks and seeing a lot of this, I mean, the actual like launching of Spaceworks and everything. Is there anything that you've seen that's uh, any lessons learned or any unique uh, visions or views that you've had kind of, well, being the director here at the top that um, has really inspired you or you think is worth sharing with our listeners um, since you become the director? I, I think probably first and foremost is to, to not be the director at the top uh, of making sure that all of those voices are being heard, that there there's opportunity because there's so many places where you're going to find so many great ideas and making sure that there's a venue. Right? And this is, I, I think, one of the radical changes that has enabled so much. <clears throat> and we, when we talk about kind of the democratization of technology, uh, and this, this goes to, to some kind of tactical challenges for our Air Force uh, in things like developing 21st century information technology, developing 21st century data approaches. These are these are things that have been a struggle for us. And so being able to use those tools in a way that makes sure those voices are heard, to be able to gather ideas at scale, to vet those ideas at scale, to match talent to task, right? To 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 identify that innovator and making sure that innovator is connected to other innovators of like minds and those innovators are connected to those enabling functions, you know, whether it be the, the things like contracting and financial management, you know, if, with, without that discipline, we have great creativity that never really brings, comes to fruition, uh, bringing for that discipline and balancing that discipline with the innovation, the, the speed and the discipline, I think is, is one of the biggest challenges that that you have is is keeping kind of that open door to those great ideas and and then quickly using 21st century techniques to filter those ideas and to connect those ideas with the enabling capabilities to bring those ideas to fruition I, it, it's been a challenge and one of the best ways of approaching that challenge is creating that opportunity for autonomy and that ownership for the folks that, that have that passion and to, to see that unlocked has been has really been phenomenal for me. I mean, very inspiring and a great way to kind of bring this all to a head to really show what it's like to see uh, these brilliant minds and people all work together and you getting to have like learning as much from them as they can from you. Uh, kind of putting that forward then, where do you see AFWorks and Spaceworks heading off in the next few years here? We know 2030 is not so far off. So um, where are a lot of these initiatives going or where would you like them to go uh, now that again, Spaceworks has launched just this year? Absolutely. Well, you know, I think one, we have a responsibility to make sure that we are keeping trust 
uh, probably first and foremost. And, and I would start keeping trust with our airmen and our guardians that we continue to build out those opportunities for their ideas to actually come to fruition. And so making sure that if, if an idea doesn't, and that does, not every idea is a good idea, but, but bringing forward those ideas and being able to kind of have, uh, you know, that collaborative, constructive feedback to say, hey, that, that kind of missed the mark this time, but don't get discouraged. I, I, want, I need you to, I need you to take this lesson learned and come back with even more. And when you do, I want to make sure that if, if we're not bringing an idea forward, it's not because we didn't put the thought into it or we didn't, we didn't have a tool set. It's because that wasn't quite there. Right. So being deliberate about selecting those things that do have viability, being honest to our airmen about, hey, well, this, there's a reason we don't, this doesn't have viability. Keep going though, right? I mean, that encouragement and continuing to fuel that passion, I think is key to keeping trust with our airmen. We also have to keep trust with, with our leadership that we are, we are indeed delivering those capabilities that we are doing it. It speeds that, that have really been unprecedented in opportunities to leverage, you know, simplest sense using other people's money. But the exciting thing about using other people's money is that's investment externally into capabilities that with our help really unlock brand new markets and use the use of that money actually multiplies that investment for those investors out there that, that are excited to team. And so keeping, keeping trust with that industry engagement with those investors is critical in a dual use world we really have to think closely about this whole of government effort and being able to bring in the interagency in the work that we are doing. Because many of these technologies, it's not for a lack of technology that's allowing them to move forward, but sometimes it's some of our culture, it's some of our regulations, it's some of our processes. And you've already seen phenomenal things that the Air Force Material Command has done to create trust in these technologies that unlock some of the hesitation that our other friends in the whole of government might be reluctant to allow to move forward. And it is a whole of government effort. It is a whole of nation effort, uh, continuing to build that collaboration, continuing to bring those challenges forward with a, in a disciplined manner, but in a manner that doesn't necessarily accept a no and says, Hey, what is, what's the yes, if here uh, with that. And then the, the trust internationally uh, with the other countries that are out there who are excited to participate in this. Uh, the number of countries who are, who are standing up some flavor of a works, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, an, an, an ice works or you know, collaboration on some of the IT, uh, there is a notable opportunity here uh, to help shape partnership relationships. And so I think making sure that we, we keep that trust, uh, that we're careful about the mission and the mission scope stays at a pace that is aligned with kind of our resourcing and the growth of what has so far been, you know, a multitude of experiments, uh, how we grow those experiments and, and really prove them out as long-term and enduring capabilities. And I think that's such an important aspect to touch on here uh, that you just hit was that idea of it almost sounds like working with, you know, an AFWERX or SpaceWorks or these international like communities, as you mentioned, bringing up all these works is, is that kind of risk aversion that many folks may have that kind of be leery towards trying to say, hey, maybe we should try the solution versus whatever the other may be. And you mentioned that sometimes some ideas may not work out, but it's not for lack of trying. It really does inspire you to want to take part in this and really want to hear where this is going because hearing that we have these amazing people working behind these solutions shows that we could have that next gps that you said they have a solution for banking later in life that we never could have predicted so it's amazing you're at the forefront of this really great push of technologic innovation no it's, it's exciting to be here uh, and obviously just the partnership you know is absolutely essential to being able to move forward at a pace and that's what's that's what's been exciting is to see Kind of these stovepipes dissolve and see a level of collaboration across this multidisciplinary, a very diverse group, really moving forward uh, on a common purpose is, is very exciting. We could have rounded that out better than our uh, than better than we could have planned. So uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us, Colonel Diller. Um, it's been a pleasure to learn more about AFWorks, uh, SpaceWorks, where the future may lie, and of course uh, your history. So um, we hope to talk to you again soon and. Again, it was a, just a, an enjoyable time. So thank you again. Thank you both for giving me the opportunity and really uh, look forward to seeing seeing this grow and uh, appreciate the time and all the support from 
the rest of Air Force Research Laboratory as we've become a new member here. Make sure to follow us on social media at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube at AF Research Lab. And remember, stay curious. Logging off.